So the first generally accepted victim is Mary Ann Nichols. So this is August 31st, 1888. Born Mary Ann Walker on August 26, 1845 in Dawes Court, Shoe Lane off Fleet Street. She was christened in or some years before 1851. You see how meticulous these records are, Maxwell? Like, they, they know approximately when she was christened. <laughs> That's the, crazy. I can't believe they kept so much detail in the records. At the time of her death, in the East London Observer guessed her age at 30 to 35. At the inquest, her father said she was nearly 44 years of age, but it must be owned that she looked 10 years younger. But she didn't have a birth certificate? Well, they said she was born on August 28, 1845, so I'm guessing they did. Uh, the London Observer was the one who guessed her age. Ah. So And so she was 5'2", brown eyes, dark complexion, brown hair turning gray, five front teeth missing, and teeth slightly discolored. She Is that also before or after she got killed. Before. <laughs> a lot of people had missing teeth. So what Maxwell and I discussed, the Whitechapel district of the east end of London, it is not a pleasant place to live. Like people were very downtrodden. And some of these women are widely reported as being prostitutes, but they weren't really. These were side jobs. It was common for poor women to kind of moonlight as prostitutes. But that's not their main profession. Like, if you have your main 9 to 5 and you also do, like, a little job on the side, you're not going to call your side job your profession, and that's kind of what was done with this case. He didn't... These weren't really prostitutes. Mm. But, they, or, but they were, like, a side prostitute or something. Occasionally. Not, yeah. Some of them weren't even, weren't even doing it when they were killed. So it's almost... It's, you'd be a little bit more accurate in saying these were random, more random victims. We'll be going into the specifics of the victims and Jack the Ripper's M.O. and the slight di and the differences in M.O. in some of these cases. But the other thing that's really bizarre about this case is there were a lot of police stationed. There were constables patrolling constantly. The windows of time where he could have done this were very small. So... It's not a lot of people when they think Jack the Ripper, they think like these abandoned alleyways in the dark. There were police patrolling all over the place. Hmm. So the, the Jack the Ripper had very narrow windows of time to get away with his crimes. And the other thing that's kind of bizarre in some of these crime scenes, there wasn't a lot of blood. And we will be going into the logistics of the killings in a dedicated podcast, but this is not an average run-of-the-mill serial killer case. One of the reasons it continues to fascinate more than a century after they occurred. And she also had a small scar on her forehead. So this is Marianne Nichols, August 31st, 1888. So let's go through how the victims were killed. Mary Ann Nichols, so the body of Mary Ann Polly Nichols, was discovered in the wee morning hours of August 31st, 1888 at about 3.40 a.m. by two carmen on their way to work. Her body was found in front of a gated horse stable entrance on Bucks Row, Whitechapel. The two men who happened upon her, Charles Cross and Robert Paul, saw Polly lying on the ground with her skirts pulled up to her waist. At first, they weren't sure if she was either passed out drunk or dead but after some hesitation they approached her and felt her hands and face which were both cold to the touch feeling very uneasy about what they had just stumbled upon the men hurried off to alert the first constable they could find minutes later she was discovered by pc john neal while passing through buck's row while on the nightly beat he shone his lantern on polly's body which revealed her lifeless eyes staring up into the sky her throat had been deeply severed in two locations nearly decapitating her and her lower abdomen partially ripped open by a deep jagged wound the killer had also made several other incisions in her abdomen with the same knife the doctor who had arrived at the scene to examine her body had deemed her time of death to be less than 30 minutes from the time she'd been found 